Good evening. How y'all doing? I'm about to head into work. And uh, I got to work one day in a row. How cool is that? So it really helps mentally as a nurse when you've just got to work one day. You're like, I got this. I mean, do what you will. I can make it. It's 12 hours. Uh, so your attitude is much better instead of having three or four in a row where you're just like, oh my gosh, Jesus, I don't know if I can do this. Take the wheel. So uh, anyway, I'm, so I'm heading in and, and I'm excited. I got the light fixture in. I had to, I took an extension cord. I clipped off the, uh, the female part. And then I pulled out the three wires that are inside the extension cord and I stripped each one. And then I found the matching cords that went uh, through the three cords that were hanging off of the light fixture I wanted to hang. I call my brother, he's an electrician. I'm like, am I doing this right? This is the ground and this one's the black, black to black, white to white. And there's these two different colors. I think they're the ground. He's like, yeah, so it worked great. As for the water, um, I tried to feed the pump, the water pump, straight up through the hole that's in the sink already and kind of use it as the sink. So I just, it's got a spout, so just pump it and then you got the water that comes out. And um, it doesn't match up like the big barrel, huge water jug that it sits in normally. I put it to the bo bottom of the sink in the back and I tried to fit it all together and it's, it, it, the, the the sink is flush with the wall so I can't push it far back enough for it the hole to to match with the sink so I cut a bigger hole thinking that might do it and I ruined the jug seven seven dollars and fifty cents but anyway um and then so I'm still working on that I'm trying to figure out how to fix that and um I'm getting my truck ready um because it is just disgusting. We constantly go swimming every day and it's just, you know, wet dog and sand and just, and then I had salt all over it from, um, I was on the island, uh, Sanibel Island a couple days ago, just hanging out, swimming and all that. So, um, I need to do a deep clean on this truck and really, really manage it, uh, better especially in this you know I don't live by the sea but when I travel by the ocean it you know that salt water is hard on the on the vehicle so I'm trying to make this thing last as long as I can um got a really cool cool scripture today uh Dave Ramsey often shares it in his teachings Proverbs 6 in that chapter it talks about you know if you go basically if you go in debt with your neighbor and, and you basically owe them, do everything you can to get out of debt. Like, escape debt like you a gazelle would out of a snare. Like, just with all your might, and just run from it. And it even says, don't let yourself rest until it's paid off. Like, And I, I have strong convictions about debt, and apparently not strong enough because I'm in debt. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it was just a good reminder of, you know, sometimes you think about when you get your check, you're like, well, should I pay a little extra or should I suffer and pay a lot and get it over with? And um, I definitely don't want to suffer any more than I'm doing right now. But, you know, just, I don't know, my opinion is to pay it off a little slower. And that's when I got to Florida, I even said it to a friend, I'm like, I'm just not in a hurry right now because um, this job's so stressful and everything. But the more I think about it, when I read that scripture, it's actually not an option as a Christian. Either the word's true or it's not. So it says that I should work harder to get out of debt. So I'm taking that into consideration on my decisions that I'm making with my money. And let's see, it was really hot today. 92 or 3 so hot so hot but you know what it gets a cooking in that trailer it'll be 
80, 85 with the air conditioner on. And I think, what am I doing? And then I see a neighbor, she's coming out of her house and she looks like she's just gonna jump out of the shower with her clothes on. And I'm like, you okay? She's like, the air can air conditioner just can't keep up. And although I'm buying this big honk of a honking huge air conditioner and it's coming in the mail. Um, you know, it's just, it takes 30 days to make a habit and make something, not just a habit, but to get used to something. And I think sometimes I have avoided the uncomfortableness of the heat. And I know I have. Like midday, 12, I'll go out to eat. I'll go shopping then. We go swimming. Like, and I don't think that's wrong, but like, it's okay to be hot, I think, is what I'm trying to say. It's, it comes with a package deal of living on the road. You're going to be warmer than usual. And um, I've got some great fans, and I can literally sit there and not be sweating, uh, but still be warm, but, you know, manage the heat. And so I think I'm just kind of getting used to it. And it's frustrating because my tent, FedEx keeps somehow not, they're bringing the tent to the campground and then turning around with it and leaving because they're unsure of where to drop it off. And it's really frustrating because if I had that tent, I could be do, I could be outside and screened in with a fan. And I think what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to try it out tomorrow because I don't work the next day. I'm going to actually open it up all the way make it a wind tunnel open the back doors open the front door open the two wind the two itty bitty windows i have turn on the big old fans i have they're almost industrial size turn them suckers on and let it fly and see how warm it gets i have a thermostat and a humidifier um humidity detector on the wall and i'm curious to see what happens because i bet you it's more comfortable but the same temperature as is if the air conditioner was on at this point um so i'm gonna try it out tomorrow i'm gonna go no air conditioning and it's gonna be in the 90s and it's gonna be florida it's gonna be hot but you know if you make something a wind tunnel and the sun is not on you um and my brother had a good point he was talking about it the other day like you know, you can have a room that's 95 degrees, but if you have this huge fan blowing, it'll drop the temperature. Just the fan alone, just circulating that air will drop that temperature. And so, not drastically, but by a couple degrees. And so, I think I'm going to try that tomorrow. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, I am tackling organization right now. It's not my favorite. I had a big Rubbermaid full of crap and none of it had home it was like all just like an extra toothbrush a rubber band um you know a plug that I don't know what goes to and you know a cup like it was just the most random stuff full in a rubber maid so I got rid of that today and got the rubber maid out because it was sitting on the floor it's been on the floor for a month now because I've just haven't wanted to tackle it it was in the way of everything so it's uh yeah, it's good. I'm I'm getting going with the dang thing and figuring it out and um, swimming every day has been really good. Just being able to get out of the house and it's interesting. Just I was thinking about this back when I was living in my big three thousand square foot house and right before that when I was living in my big apart well my small apartment in in the high rise and just being so lonely being near people that loved me and not seeing them for a long period of time and everyone too busy and it's not just one person it's, it's it was a general situation like pretty much everyone was too busy or not wanting to hang out and I remember also losing my best friend Samantha she's one of my best friends and I lost her during that time too so I remember just feeling so alone so very alone and it's interesting now because I am alone I am truly alone <laughs> and you know I have little neighbors that have invited me to go to the VFW and you know sit around and talk about who we hate in politics and uh 
you know, I converse with people at work and I talk on the phone a lot, but I am completely alone. I am completely alone. And I just think how far God's brought me because even just three years ago, this, even though it was a desire of mine to try traveling, I would have never made it. I would have, I would have been unsuccessful because I didn't know how to manage alone, aloneness. You'd think that I'd gotten it since I've been alone my whole, practically my whole, well, I have, I've been alone my whole life. I mean, I've lived in community, be it army or missions or whatever, off and on through my whole life. But like really being alone, I couldn't even take it up to three years ago. And I even desired to do this, like I said, but you know, it's God's perfect timing. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. So here we are. But anyway, I just wanted to put a post out there of what's going on in here and what my plans are. And I hope y'all are having a good evening. I got to get going to work and clock in. Bye.